Let's do it live on a Tuesday edition of the program. Merely Bo, the great Z, luminaries at the at the microphone all day today, more, one after another, a steady stream. That's of luminaries. what it's all about, baby. The boys are back in town. They're back, luminaries. baby. Luminaries. I mean, we're talking head coach Kevin Stefanski. Is that today? That is today, right? When is that? Give us the lineup official, Gibbe. I know Miles. So much going on. Miles already talked. We decided we were putting out the bigs of the bigs today. And the quarterback, yes. I I believe QB1 might talk uh, until he's up there. You never know. know. Deshaun Watson will also have David Njoku live in studio today, which is allegedly. No, not allegedly. I'm saying it definitively. Allegedly. Definitively. Miles talked at the podium. We'll have that. Definitively. Definitive. Uh, David Amari Joe Cooper, Cooper talked at the podium. You feel st- you're, you're I'm saying definitively. How do you feel about that? Uh, I have thoughts. I have thoughts. I mean, I I hope so. Do we still have the ball the Chiefs signed for us? Is it somewhere? Yes. Is it in there? It is. Yeah, that was a great one. Um, yeah, so this is it. So this is this is the av- this is availability day, so everyone's talking. So coach is going to be talking about a half hour. We'll have that for you. At some point, we'll have the Deshaun Watson uh, conversation. We'll have that audio yeah. for you as well. Um, and away we go. The official, kind of the official start of the we're here off season. It feels like it today. Yeah. Absolutely. A couple things I just want to, first of all, send our condolences to former Cleveland Brown Chris Smith and his family who passed away at the age of 31. Um, he was a great guy when he was here. He endured an unspeakable tragedy while he was here as a member of the Cleveland Browns. And uh, just heart goes out to him. He's survived by his daughter. Um, just very, very sad. So wanted to certainly acknowledge that and uh, the, the tragic passing of a member of our Cleveland Browns family. Um, and, yeah, that's a, that's a very hard thing. There are guys here, not many left, who probably played alongside Chris Smith, but certainly some of them did. And so certainly our thoughts and prayers with his family today. Uh, and then the other thing I want to talk about was, you know, the report that came out yesterday about the stadium and that the Browns would be renovating the stadium. And then in the while they are renovating it, move somewhere, yeah. potentially Columbus for two, three seasons. That's not true. Well, let's also just I think it's really important because we are in a disinformation age. Oh, yeah. That's what we're in. Um, so that it was not really a report. It was a blog post. Um, the the report. The at one point even the thinking was it would I, I believe the line was something like and I don't have it up because I paid very little attention to it once I saw it and realized it was mostly nonsense but there were a few kernels of truth in it that that if you could sift through the nonsense and you got to you go well there here's where some validity comes in right so that's why it gets a little bit of credence um, but the thing that got all the attention was the moving to Columbus for for three seasons to play home games which no one has ever done that so just for perspective the Bears played one season in Champaign when they renovated Soldier Field. Watson's up. The um, You tell me, Gibby. Do you want to take Watson? You're, well, you got Chief coming in here, well, right? You do have so, Chief. I mean, I don't point. think you can. I think I would rather play Deshaun in its entirely. Well, yes. Right? Yes. Yep. And then because yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to. We don't nope. want to jump. I don't want to jump in. And then, yes. and then We're good. Chief's coming in, and I don't yeah. want to do that. So, um, Okay, so the, the Vikings were two seasons in a brand-new college stadium that is across the river from where they built their Correct. palace. So that is the those are the two most recent examples of build a stadium, we got to find a place to play. Neither of them are two, were two hours away for three seasons to renovate. That, so it made no sense. But even in the, in the post, the guy did not say, and I'm blanking on the guy who wrote it, he didn't say, this is what my sources say. He's saying, what he said was, it, essentially, it's plausible that they could play in Columbus. And then it got turned into... That this was a report, but right. it's not. No, but we can't tell the difference anymore. Well, because because it, opinion it, and new fact, there's it's all gray. Well, and and nonsense. So it's just is, nonsense. Is and fact. then, like legitimate people, legitimate news places were running with this and having it on their websites, and there was just no validity to it ever. No, and using the headlines that said the Browns are going to be yeah. a club. So, just, so just so that was this is Cleveland Browns daily. You can always pay attention to the scores. These aren't even scores. This is just straight up telling you. That is not true, um, and that the Browns, you know, like the other team. Let's not forget there was a major renovation done uh, for the Cavs, yeah, and also for the Guardians. All played through it, yeah. That certainly would be if that is the direction this ultimately goes. And there, that's the other thing: none of this is finished. Right. There has been talk of renovating Cleveland Brown Stadium. If that's the way that it goes, then. The Browns certainly believe they can stay in the building while the renovations are being done over the course of a few seasons. If it is not, 
then we have a whole nother discussion that we'll see to take place down the line. But that's kind of the discussion. Everybody knows that First Energy Stadium is in need of a renovation if it's going to remain, if, mm-hmm. or Cleveland Browns Stadium, I'm sorry, if that's where the Browns are going to continue to play, it needs to be renovated. So that's really what they're looking at and, you know, the development of that downtown area, the waterfront and the, all the, the grass and the walking. And that's something that has been discussed. That's not new. Mm-hmm. But the one part that has everybody up in arms and the only part that really would be even newsworthy was a part that was erroneous and fallacious yeah. in nature. And that is that the Browns were going to be. It is like a fallacy. I, I thought it came out different. It did it. It was with an A. A F. <laughs> Fair, fair. Nonetheless. Irregardless. Irregardless. No O either. The bottom line is the the Browns are going to be playing in Cleveland Brown Stadium. Yeah. I mean, like, They're not playing I, in Columbus. It was just They're amazing. In, like I was getting else. all of this stuff, you know, from down there, um, you know, wanting me wanting to run by the stuff. And I'm I'm like, I it just seems so implausible that a a organization would take three seasons worth impossible for three seasons of home games and take them somewhere else. Like for three seasons, what are you building? I mean, like there's just no way that you would ever do something like that. So that, that was always the part of it that as soon as I saw that, I could, I paid no more attention to it. None at that point. Yeah. What? Nothing. I'm just smiling. Yeah. It's close. It wasn't that close. It's in the vicinity, but it's a real word. I'm aware, but it was a. It wasn't like we were storming the beaches with your man winners. All of that was factual, exactly, and, it, and something that did happen. Same. Although he didn't storm the beaches, he came out of he a. Came, that's right. Out of a out of a plane, uh, paratrooped in, if but you then will. stormed, and then stormed and uh, took out tactical positioning. Yeah. Um, as is uh, illustrated in Band of Brothers, which is fantastic. So we're waiting on the chief who's coming in here. Um, he looks fantastic, by the way. I got to talk to him of course, downstairs a little is he bit. Ever not? I mean, no, he's an Adonis, and he has had a great off season. Was at the UFC fights. We'll talk to him about that, where he was just hobnobbing and rubbing elbows, greatest, and looks like you know he could throw his hat in the ring one day. But yeah, he, if he wanted, he, yeah, yeah. I, I I think that I'm excited for for him. It's cool that everybody's back, but like you said, it's April. Yeah, it's too, we can't play until hard. September. Yeah, it's tough. It's snowing. There was snow on roofs this morning. Yeah, there were. Um, brisk. It was last eighty night. degrees on su- eighty-five on Saturday. No big deal. Saturday night, it's Tuesday. Lacrosse and shorts and t-shirts. Yeah. Oh yeah, how was last night? Last. Oh, it was unbelievable because it, it was windy too. Oh, it was it, awful. It was windy, side sleet, rain. It was awful. Um, and it was in the high thirties. I mean, it was brutal, brutal. I bet. And I even had uh, NBC had the surgical gloves on under the lacrosse mitts, and it was still just brutal i mean it was i want i was you know contemplating starting a fire in a barrel like that's kind of where i was that was my mentality towards it um just to circle back around on the um on the stadium stuff there is an opportunity here yeah from a dome perspective and this is me talking this isn't scores this is nothing there is not a dome in this state there should be and with that with a dome comes the following First of all, most importantly, perfect climate control for elite offensive football of which you're trying to build. That's so right. start there. Uh, from your own customer standpoint, it's pretty beneficial because every game is 70 degrees. And we can talk all day about how much we love the elements. Uh, I saw the game on, what was it, Christmas Day? Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. Dreadful. No, not. You don't because there were a lot of empties. And there's – yeah, Mr. Zagura. When you feel that you have assembled a very, very good football team, especially one that's centered around yeah. passing the football, you want to eliminate variables and of allow course. your talent to shine through and win. That is why continue. if you play a college football national championship or a Super Bowl, you look for perfect climate. That's right. They don't play a lot of Super Bowls in Buffalo because they want it to take the variables out. No. They, they want to know who's the best team. What? Are, where are we going to get the most pristine conditions? Perfect that's conditions. The, that's exactly the idea. So that those first and foremost, but then beyond that, the reciprocal part of it, there's so much because you're talking about, as you like, as you've said many times, WrestleManias, uh, you're talking about final fours, you're talking about Super Bowls, you're talking about big 10 championship games. You're talking about Ohio state football, home playoff games in the state of Ohio. If there is not a dome in the state of Ohio by the t- and there won't be by the time the playoff comes into effect in a couple of years in college football, Ohio state will play home football games in the state of Indiana in the college football playoff. They will go to Indy and play think about that 
Think about how obtuse that is to take Ohio State, the pride of Ohio, and go play them in Indy because there's no place in the state to play them. Um, and the same would be true of Big Ten championship games. There's so many things that and there come with so it. much money. There were so much. And there's it's the such a community. benefit to the local community, yes. to the local area. Um, and it's and in this instance, you would own the state. And what you get when you own the state of Ohio from a dome perspective is you get Ohio State football yep. because they're going to be playing in the dome in the college football playoff and in the Big Ten championship game. They already do. They go play it in Indy every year. Uh, that thing could be moved and you could play it somewhere where you build a dome in the state of Ohio, period. So that's – it's beyond – just the primary is the benefits for us. The secondary, though, is so far reaching in terms of the benefit it would have for the state. I mean, when you trickle down and the benefit is Ohio State football, that's a pretty big trickle down. It's a huge trickle down. And it is. We know the benefits are enormous. It obviously requires a great deal of financing and a, a collaboration between the team and the city. But you would hope that at some point that that is something that can be worked on and agreed upon. Because, yeah. it, to, as you said, it makes so much sense. And I think for the city of Cleveland, you've got the convention center. You've got the hotel mm -hmm. infrastructure for to sure. host massive events. Oh, my God. You've, yes, you can host so, the Final Four in your sleep here. Right. So – that's worth WrestleMania. They just did, uh, I think, for the city of L.A. or the Los mm -hmm. Angeles region mm -hmm. over the weekend generate something like over $50 million. So that's a ton of money that comes into your town for a weekend. Yeah. So if you can have one or two of those events a year and what you're talking about, see, that's the difference. WrestleMania, Super Bowl, those happens once in a great while. Mm -hmm. What you're talking about is something with Ohio State – that is every year. That could be theoretically. That could be yearly. Year where Ohio State would host a home playoff game up here. Not to mention, as you mentioned, because the they're 10, going to twelve Big buddy. Ten championships. Yeah, they're going to twelve. They could go to sixteen. That's the next logical step. Is they'll go to sixteen teams on the playoff. They're going to twelve. I'd like a fourteen team. You know why fourteen? I don't. It reminds me of WrestleMania four, the great WrestleMania four tournament. I have my notes. Well, what's cool about fourteen is you get. The top two seeds, there's still something to 14 play. 14 reminds of four. Yeah, WrestleMania four, which okay. was. And there was a 14-team playoff. It was a 14-man tournament for the 14 belt. 14-man tourney. Yeah. So your top two seeds got buys into the second round. Okay. Who so are the two seeds? Who are the one oh, and two man. seed in WrestleMania four bracket? WrestleMania four bracket. My guess is maybe Hogan and. It wasn't Hogan and Andre because they ended up DQing each other. The finals was uh, the Macho Man Randy Savage against. The million dollar man Ted DiBiase. That was the finals. Yeah. Wow. And they—that's when they crowned the Macho Man. And then, why do you think, in retrospect, as you're getting to that, why do you think Hogan was so popular then? Because he was the. But he wasn't the most interesting. All right. So here was the bracket. Let's like see. as little kids when we would play wrestling, no, I was no one was ever wanting to be Hogan. Really? No. No. Okay. So Hulk and Andre got buys to the second round, but then wrestled each other. That's what it was. Okay. Then you had Hacksaw Jim Duggan against the Million Dollar Man. <laughs> the Rock Don Morocco against Dino Bravo. Wow, I don't remember him. Dino Bravo? Mm -mm. Oh, man, Dino Bravo was good. Uh, you had Ricky the Dragon Steamboat sure. against Greg the Hammer Valentine. Yep. The Greg Mach. the Hammer had an interesting look. He did have an interesting look, to say the very least. Yeah. Uh, then you had... The Macho Man against the Natural Butch Reed. Okay. Bam Bam Bigelow against sure. the One Man Gang. Yep. And then Jake the Snake Roberts against Ravishing Rick Rude. And DiBiase came out of the Hogan. Hogan and Andre got themselves disqualified, so they didn't go on. DiBiase ended up coming out of that side. Macho out of the other, and the Macho Man Randy Savage won the championship. So that so he held that until Hogan beat him. WrestleMania five, the Mega Powers explode. Explode. Yeah. Yep, and then never is near it again, is he? Uh, as because the, then Warrior no. comes in, and then he's kind of on the back burner. Warrior wins it at six. I think seven. Hogan gets it back over maybe Sergeant Slaughter. I want. Well, say. Warrior disappeared it for after yeah. right. I don't know if he fell out of favor or what the deal was, but he fell out. He kind of was off the off the grid there for a minute. Oh yeah, baby. But yeah. there it is. That's yeah, a good fourteen person bracket though. Except you wouldn't I like do it. it. 
that way you would split out. No, the, you'd go the buys. top twos buys, and then you go yeah. one through twelve. You'd seed sure, exactly. Well, either way, you're looking at one or two. When they go to a fourteen or more likely a sixteen team playoff, you could be talking about two home playoff games in the region in yes. your stadium, right? Yearly. So I don't know. To me, that seems like that that feels like a, a win for for everybody across the board. And honestly, it feels like basically generational. Like it's something that would be part of this area forever. Forever. Yes. You're always going to be a home to those days. Look how much Indy's benefited. No, before they built Lucas Oil, it wasn't like anybody's like, oh, we got to go to Indy. Think of all the stuff that's been in Indy. Think of all the stuff that's been at Ford Field. Right. Yeah. It's it's kind of a no-brainer. No-brainer. Um, all right. So, uh, I, so I believe I had that. Allegedly. Chief, Allegedly. What? I believe I had that allegedly. Why allegedly now? Well, but it's not here. We got we got coach we, coming we up at the bottom forward. of the hour. We got other things going on. We can't do this forever. Do you want to so take a can't. quick? Do you want to take a break right now? I think it's smart to take a break. Why don't we and take see a where break? We're at. And then, we got coach in fifteen minutes. So. Well, coach right. might be before that. So that's right. why. So I'm then like, we'll then we'll do that. Right. Then we'll take a quick time out. You will hear from coach on this show. That's definitive. You will hear from Deshaun Watson on the show. That's Chief will be in the studio. I believe. Well, maybe. Cleveland Browns daily eight fifty ESPN Cleveland. time uh, it's it's about you're down foundational knowledge of our systems uh, and, and you really have to start at square one if you're going to build uh, on top of it you got to be real sound in what you're doing so that's really how we focused this off-season program in these first few days and these first few weeks are just really starting at the at the basic starting with with early uh, meetings and uh, we really it's it's onboarding week we're not just jumping right into the football we want to talk to each player talk to them individually about what they can get better at uh, and then dive into the nitty gritty, and, and that's what we're doing with these uh, with this time in the classroom. So, with that, I will take any questions. 
And Deshaun was just in and described last year as a whirlwind and how it's kind of a, a day and night difference from where he was last year. Does that feel that way to you that there's kind of a, a freshness to this given all the circumstances of last season? Yeah, I, I think that's fair to say, Tom. And I think, you know, for every player, uh, things change year to year. Teams change year to year. We talk about that. And, uh, you know, you have new faces in this building. You have new coaches, new players. Uh, so, so year to year just feels so different. And then certainly for Deshaun to, to have that season under, under his belt and, and those experiences and be able to, to learn from everything uh, f that's happened last year into the past, I, I think he'll be a better player for it. I think we'll all be better for, for everything we've been through. Could you address the Perry and Winfield situation first? Is he a, will he remain a member of the team? Is he here or is he in Houston? And just going forward with him, how do you treat him? Yeah, I think, as you can imagine, uh, Tony, I, I won't get into who's here on a day-to-day -day basis, that type of thing. It's a voluntary program. Uh, with any of our players, listen, I want them to be safe uh, when they're not in this building. I, I want them to be, uh, you know, making sure that they're following all uh, – you know, rules out outside of this building and, and making sure that they're, they're being safe in the community. And, and in this particular instance, we'll get, gather all the information that, that we uh, need to and, and, and monitor it and that type of thing. Uh, but I'm not ready to go past that other than to tell you um, taking all this in as we go. Remember the team. Yes. Um, uh, Amari said he had the core muscle surgery uh, in February. When do you expect him to be able to do stuff for you on the field? Yeah, that's a good question, Scott. We'll we'll, we'll take it slow with him. Uh, he's feeling good, uh, you know, but we're not. I'm not on the field with those guys for another couple of weeks. Uh, OTAs aren't into until May, so uh, he's somebody that you we'll, we will not rush him back to the field. Uh, we're going to make sure that we take our time and, and utilize all these days to to get his body right, get his mind right. But uh, when that is, I'm not. I can't say exactly able to heal his foot without surgery or did he have a procedure uh he did not have surgery so he's in rehab as we speak as well It'll take him a little while to, to ramp up right? yeah he's he's ramping up he's uh, he's doing a good job uh down the way in the uh training room he's doing a good job i have a message to you deliver on the first day yesterday is it, is it a yeah set a tone type of meeting <laughs> yeah i mean it, it's it is april uh so you do have some time until that first game rolls around um, but you know yesterday was really the first thing that we're going to do is the 2023 Browns that's day one uh, again it's voluntary um, we want this to be a place where the guys can come and, and get a lot of work done in, in a safe competitive fun environment uh, but I don't think they need Newt Rockney speeches in April I think they need to understand what's what they need to do day to day what what each player needs to get better at I think that's such a major part of April, early parts of these programmers, find something to get better at, whether that's mentally or physically. You sort of thought that uh, the Greg Newsom situation would be much ado about nothing. Are you kind of happy to hear him you know, talk about coming back in with a great new attitude and be excited and that's not an issue? Yeah. I mean, as you know, Mary Kay, I, uh, I, <laughs> I don't put much stock in social media. Sorry, guys. Um, but, you know. I think Greg's in a great place. I think he's excited, like all our guys are, and 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 you take each situation uh, as it comes. Kevin, how much different um, will your offense be with Elijah Moore and Marquise Goodwin? Yeah, I think every year you better be different. Uh, you know, I think Jeff, there's things that we've already go, gone over with the team that are going to be different, um, and then it's a matter of carving out roles for each of our players. You mentioned Elijah, Marquise, guys that are new to our system. Uh, we got to find out what they do well. I have a pretty good feel for it and, and understanding just based on the players and the tape and that type of thing, but uh, I, I think part of our job as coaches is to use this spring to find out what really clicks for our players, the skill guys, what clicks for the quarterback, uh, and then you streamline all of that into your offense going into the season. Along those lines, <laughs> how uh, worn out has the whiteboard gotten this offseason? Yeah, I mean, and you know, honestly, there's no shortage of plays. Uh, you'll never run out of plays. And I think for us as coaches, you spend so much time in the offseason studying other teams, studying yourself, studying college football. Uh, great ideas come from all levels of football, high school, college. I don't, you know, they're all good plays. I think 
it ultimately becomes what can your players own, what can your quarterback own, what can your your receivers own, what what do they, uh, what becomes second nature for them. Um, so, while we could draw up a thousand plays and we have, um, it really it's important that you try to drill down for your players and give them things that they can go practice, things that they can go get get really good at. Um, you watch, look around the league, and sometimes there's beauty in the simplicity of what people do. Uh, so you, you don't want to um, bog your players down with uh, X's and O's. Aside from what happened to Winfrey, just second-year player in a position of dire need, what did Schwartz see in him, and was he excited about working with him? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I don't want to sing, single anybody out. I think Jim's excited about a lot of guys along that front. Some of the veterans were able to add uh, in, in that room, uh, some, some guys – uh, that have played meaningful snaps. Uh, I think we have uh, a variety of talent uh, in that defensive line room, and, and I think we're excited about it. Kevin, are you, um, since it's your fourth year, uh, your fourth uh, n- new beginning, actually, it's in because of Coach Bailey, are you doing anything different now than you did uh, last year was a normal year? Anything different? At this time of year, yeah, I mean, we'll structure. Yeah, I mean, every year you're looking at your program and what you can do better. Maybe what, you know, maybe we did too much meeting time there. We need more, um, more time in the wa- in walk through here. We need to in seven on seven. We want to hit this more. So you're constantly tinkering uh, with that. But the the structure of what we do will remain largely intact. Uh, obviously, we're going to be out there one less week. So cutting off the last week of the off season program. Uh, was is new for us uh, with that Hall of Fame game coming. We know your three off seasons have been uniquely challenging prior to this, starting with COVID. Does this feel normal so far? <laughs> How much different is it with so much less uncertainty? Yeah, I mean, obviously that plays into it. I mean. You know, that year to year, you got to deal with things, and, and that was one of the things that we had to work through with repetitions and, and getting both guys ready. So that was unique, but there's always going to be something like Tony tried to get me to allude to, and uh, you just got to be ready to roll with the punches. Is anything less than the playoffs unacceptable to you this year and probably everybody in the building? I mean, I think every building, Mary Kay, I hope all 32 clubs would, would feel like playoffs are, you know, are a goal every single season. Uh, I can promise you 32 clubs are going to tell their teams like we are going to that your, your goal is to win the Super Bowl. I mean, that's that has to be your goal every single year. So uh, I don't think that changes year to year. Kevin, I know it's only a couple days in the building, but what's kind of been the feedback you've gotten from the defensive guys about Jim and, and you know, his style, his scheme and everything like that? Yeah, I would say it's, it's early. Uh, I think a lot of this is getting to know their teammates, some of their new teammates. Uh, but obviously, you know, having – Coach Schwartz in the room yesterday, and and just his uh, his vision for our defense and how we're going to play, and, and talking through it with each one of the position groups, I think is an exciting uh, part of, of what this off season is. It's get, it's getting to know Coach Schwartz and, and his style and, and how it's different. How sometimes it's maybe a little bit the same, but how it's different, uh, where the guys fit into it. So I think all of that is exciting when you when you talk about year one for that defense. Personally, I mean, you didn't really have much of a relationship with him before he got here. Yeah. What's it been like the last couple of months to get to know him personally? Yeah, Coach has been great. Uh, like I told you guys when, when we hired Coach, I mean, uh, in a lot of ways we're very similar uh, in, in, in terms of our background, kind of where we're from, those type of things. Uh, we see the game very, very similarly. Uh, you know, it's, I'm, I'm very, very blessed uh, to have Jim Schwartz, uh, you know, I walk out of my office. I got Coach Schwartz on the left. I got Bill Callahan on the right. I mean, I'm I'm blessed to have the wealth of knowledge, uh, the wealth of experience with those two guys. Kevin, where is Jakeem Grant at in his recovery? Oh. He's here. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I mean, are you hoping that he'll kind of slide into that primary return role? Yeah. You know, disappointed for Jakeem last season in that injury. I know he was, but he he is rehab like crazy. Um, he he's determined. Uh, he's doing a great job in in the. Uh, training room to get better so uh he, he's uh, of one mind and, and and i appreciate that he's a pro um so we'll see you know just gotta you can't rush those things uh achilles you, you gotta just make sure that we're being safe and appropriate in his rehab but he's doing a really nice job achilles and does that uh 
change your mind about these guys doing sort of the small group workouts? No. Yeah, I mean, that's unfortunate. I, I feel terrible for Mike. I mean, above anything else, I just feel bad for the kid. I mean, it's uh, it's always disappointing when, when you lose uh, a guy for it, to an injury like that. But, you know, that's part of... Part of playing football is practicing football and, and weight training and running and those type of things. And, and he, he didn't do anything wrong. Uh, nobody did anything wrong. He just uh, very, very unfortunate. Kevin, I mean, I know all this is voluntary right now, but when you have, you know, all the new pieces that you guys have, especially on defense coming in, I guess how, how much can be accomplished during this voluntary portion of the offseason? Yeah, I think a lot, actually. I think, uh, you know, we really we spend a lot of time to make sure that we're very hyper-efficient uh, with our meeting time with these players. We want to make sure that what we're setting out to cover each day is is concise. Uh, we're trying to keep it light, to keep them engaged, because you're right, it's voluntary. So we want them to, to want to be here. We want them to want to be around their teammates. Uh, so that, And then we can cover ground when it comes to offense, defense, or special teams. There, if, there's always another wave of free agency. To you as the coach, how important is it to get guys in as soon as possible to participate in the offseason program? Yeah, I think you got to be flexible there, Tony. I think that that roster is is constantly churning. Um, I, I I think back to the season where you may get a guy showing up on Monday, and you got to he's dressing on on Sunday, so you got to ramp him up quickly. So, uh, as coaches, you, you're always in that mindset of we'll get anybody ready in however much time you give us. Um, but we're excited about the guys that are, that are in here and working. In a couple of weeks, you know. Once again, it, it's no longer the centerpiece of your offseason. Um, there's no first-round pick that's going to be coming in here to be like the, the missing piece. Just how is how is that, uh, I guess, uh, affected maybe the input that you and your staff gives Andrew? Is you know they're they're looking at guys round three and, and later. Yeah, I don't think it affects our process at all uh, when it comes to the coach's role in the draft process uh, Andrew does a really really good job with uh, taking everyone's opinion uh, I think he, he, he runs our meetings uh, efficiently we, we spend a lot of time on on guys that maybe we say see differently and we, and we hear each other out and, and we uh, you know put the tape back on if you need to so uh, I, I don't think the lack of those top picks uh, has altered our process really at all A lot done. Free agency trade. Was that the plan, or were you surprised there's so much business was done? Uh, yeah, Jim. I think it's kind of like a season, and, and I think that's you know that's our off. My off season is Andrew's in season, and I think uh, he's always has a plan, and you got to be ready to adjust. Sometimes trades materialize when you didn't think they were going to, and and free agency, certain guys become available. So, uh, sir, you. Andrew went in the season, as you can imagine, with, with a strong plan. Uh, but I thought he did a nice job with uh, the help of the staff, uh, his, his group, uh, of finding opportunities to add good players. Uh, and it came in a variety of signings. Some, some of them are, are you know, big dollar signings, some not so much. I think you've got to be ready to, to, to work uh, really throughout all of free agency. And it's not really only about that, just that first and second day. So I thought Andrew really uh, did a nice job of, of having that plan. But then being ready both that first week, the second week, into this draft season, uh, being ready to just find opportunities to make our team better. Hey, uh, Kevin, you, you talk about GOK. What about Sione and Anthony? You know, any update on their progress? Yeah, no update on anybody's uh, injury rehab other than to say everybody's doing a great job. Everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. They're, they're coming along. Uh, and then I'll update you guys as we get closer to getting out in the field. Everybody's uh, rehabbing kind of on their – I don't want to get into who's here and who's not here, but they're all rehabbing. They're all doing exactly what they're supposed to do. Hold on, on carry on. You guys do have big goals and plans for this season, uh, just sort of in general terms. Will you have, uh, you know, just a, a very low tolerance for off-the-field indiscretions and, and behavior this year, right, Jim? Yeah. You know, Mary Kay, as you can imagine, like, we constantly talk to our players about making great decisions outside our building. Uh, that will never change. Um, it's something that we'll remind our guys uh, now in the off-season program. I'll remind them when the off-season program ends and we send everybody off uh, for a brief uh, respite before training camp. I mean, you're constantly talking to your guys about being safe. Uh, so that's where I would, I would think about it. Good. Okay, thanks, guys. 
All right, there's Coach Stefanski from the podium. In a, uh, if a car, truck, or motorcycle accident causes you injury, call the injury lawyers at 1-800-ELK, Ohio, for a free case review. Elk and Elk is a proud partner of your Cleveland Browns. We'll unpack some of that. We've got some news around the league as well. Yep. We will get to all of that coming up next. Listen to Cleveland Browns Daily, brought to you by BallyBet. Coming soon to Ohio on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
little bit of an NFL trade here. Allen Robinson yeah. to the Steelers is happening. And I'm a big Allen Robinson guy. Yeah. Unfortunately, it just feels like his best days are, are a little bit behind him at this point. Um, but for the Steelers, you think about they've got – he actually fits a nice need and gives them a pretty good three wide receiver set because you've got Pickens who can mm -hmm. fly. You've got Deontay Johnson who can be shifty inside or outside. And now I think Robinson can be the guy that – kind of holds thing down on third downs for you and makes some good plays. Now, the tough part is you go back to 19 and 20, 98, 11, 47, and 7, 20, 102, 12, 50, and 6. But the last two seasons, 12 games in 2021, 38 catches, 410 yards, one touchdown, 10.8 yards per catch in Chicago. In 2022 with the Rams, he had 339 yards on 33 catches, three touchdowns, 10.3 yards per catch. Uh, his yards per game the last two seasons right at 34 consistently. So those are the two lowest of his career. Um He's a stud. It was, you know, 2015, 1,400 yards, 14 touchdowns. But, again, long time ago. Only two years removed from great production, but the last two years have been pretty indicative of a player that is in decline, under 11 yards per catch, um, under 450 yards, under four touchdowns both seasons. So One of those guys who – Nice role player, though. Yeah, I think he's one of those guys that you'll look back on and go – he's one of those what-if guys. Yes. Like, if the situation were different, if he were drafted into a situation like Michael Thomas was drafted into in the Saints – there's no doubt in my mind that because he has everything that you'd want. He never need. played with a good quarterback never, ever never. in his entire no, career. He no. was a guy that I wanted bad here with the Browns. Bad, bad. Which bad. draft is that? Like uh, is that 2014. Okay, 14. 2014. Yeah, I wanted that guy very, very bad. Yeah. And we didn't get him, unfortunately. But he, good career, 3,000 yard seasons. But again, it feels like in a little bit of a decline here. Um, but I, I think he fits what they need. Well, here's what I – I mean, you, you hate to – I mean, let's just – they just win over there. It just sucks, yeah. but they do. Um, I don't believe in Kenny Pickett, but one thing that I do believe in is they are putting – they're doing their best to put him in a position to succeed. Um, so they're giving targets. They, they should have a decent run game. They've got draft picks that they can apply to various positions. If he is good, they'll put him in a position to make – to see if he is. They've got now three good receivers, Fryermuth mm -hmm. and Nash. So they've got nice skill weapons. talent, yeah. a lot of weapons. You know, what I think Allen Robinson at this point is, and I'm curious to get Gibbe's take on it, but this is who he reminds me of right now. You remember when we got Miles Austin in 2014? No. Sure. I remember him. Oh, yeah. And, you know, he was at that point a couple years removed from being, you know, a stud in Dallas. His best years were 9 10. He had 940 yards and 12. And then he comes to us in 14, and the numbers aren't gaudy. 12 games, 47 catches, 568 yards, two touchdowns. But he extended so many drives. It's like we have third and seven, Money Miles. We call it that's what his nickname was, was Money Miles. I feel like he could be a Money Miles type of a player yeah. for them where on a third and six, third and seven, he's the one who finds a soft spot, makes a contested catch, gets first downs, and keeps the chains moving. Dated a Kardashian, right? Miles. Kim? Yeah, didn't Miles Austin date Kim Kardashian? We'll see. I think so. He was a handsome fellow. Wouldn't surprise I me. I think so. When he was with Dallas. That just feels like that would add up. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You had that right. It's a good poll by you. Yeah. I haven't heard his Happy name in together. a long time. Yeah. They eventually called it quits, citing yep. distance is the reason well. for their breakup. There you go. And he was most recently a Jets coach, but I think – I think he may have gotten in a little. That would have been something if, like, both the Kardashian, two of the Kardashian daughters were coming here. Like, if he, I don't know if she was dating him when he was here, but if they were both coming here, because would Tristan have been here at that time? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, could they yep. both have been, like, flying private from. So, I was right about this. Okay. Miles Austin was suspended in December for a year for violating the NFL's gambling policy. Oh, really? It had been investigating Austin for a while. Source told ESPN after found out he'd been gambling on sports, not on NFL or college football, but he had been betting on sports. Yeah. Wagering Big from no -no a Google mobile account book. on table games yeah. and non-NFL professional sports. <laughs> He's appealing so much. I mean, table games. He can't table game it? I guess he can't not. can't go play uh, some Baccarat? I think it was online, maybe not some online blackjack or something like that. Huh. Okay. All right, so there you go. Way back in the day. Oh, I have something for you uh, uh, that I think will get you excited. You know, um, you're familiar with uh, Bill Bender. Yeah. Right? Of course. Sporting news. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've had him on several many times, times on many things. Um, a great many things. Uh, a great many things. He said, a, uh, he said something to me this morning that I was 
I couldn't help but be excited about. So Quinn Ewers, who's that kid who was at Ohio State, yep. is now at Texas. Yeah. The comp he dropped for Quinn Ewers, Jeff George without the attitude. <laughs> Hold on a second. Arm talent. Come on. Stop it. Arm stop talent. It. Stop it. Until I hear somebody say that Quinn Ewers has the best arm that's ever been on the planet, that's not a fair comparison. He's got a hose. I mean, the kid's got a hose for sure. He does. I mean, it's an easy flick. Um, I don't know. I mean, I I, I was very you excited. That clip that I we haven't watched. heard anybody drop a Jeff George Without comp. the attitude. Right. Without the attitude. Book bender immediately. <laughs> We need to talk about this. Remember that one show throw I showed you where he was with the Vikings and the ball like accelerated on the screen. It yeah. was going faster, thirty yards down the yeah. field. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what, so. That's what we got. He, that's I. I was very excited because I've not heard of Jeff George. Comp, I love it. I mean, uh, I'm a Bender a, guy in a very long time. I just why didn't it work out here at Ohio State? I don't think he was ever engaged. I think he had name. He was the number one recruit, recruit in the country. He had name, image, and likeness deals that the state of Texas would not allow for him to do. So um, he graduated early from high school, came into Ohio State when he should have been a high school senior, and got the money from the NIL, and then was really not engaged at all in Columbus and really paid no attention. And um, he was just really immature. He was a young kid. Um, and then, like, his study habits were just not there at all. Um, but from what I've heard down there, he's ranch ratcheted up a little bit. Uh, so we'll see. Um, but, yeah, that was that's what I got this morning out of him. I wonder if he found the, the lost ark and now he's got it all together. Looks like people are in search of it. Right. As a lot of people. <laughs> a lot of people are in search of it. Fantastic. If And honestly, if the hat was on. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. And the hat's not too wouldn't be something too outlandish with the rest. With no. all the rest. Uh -uh. I think it would fit relatively well seamlessly based on it yeah um coach at the podium you ready to unpack it yeah well how about it well how about it <laughs> well it seems like we're does what great job uh at the beginning of the offseason program same position as 32 other teams quest for the playoffs yeah. i don't think we're in the same position as 32 other either, teams no. i know that that's you got to give some coach speak there it's something you got to get and the truth is this is a team that has the talent to contend for this division to contend for the afc and and needs to do so mm -hmm. this is a team that needs to be playing for the afc north title in december this is a team that needs to be in the playoffs when this season is over there's too much talent for it not to be yep period yeah so that's the that's kind of the the thing is you know i understand the idea of i don't want this i don't want to become the story um i understand that i get it when you're a head coach in the NFL, though, you are part of it. You're you are part of the story. When you talk, there's there's going to be weight given to it. Um, and no, we're not the same as Houston. <laughs> we're not the no. same as Carolina. We're not the no. same as um, we. You know, we're not even the same as Baltimore. Like we don't have what Baltimore's got hanging over it with with the Lamar situation. We're not the same as Pittsburgh with the Kenny Pickett situation where they're trying to see if he is, can be what they drafted him to be. Um, you're paying your best players. You went out and got a franchise quarterback at a premium price, and you've got a roster that you're going into next week's draft without really – yeah, you need you don't really need anything. Like you nope. to your point, you could put you put made this point earlier week. You could put in a fifty three, made it yesterday. You put out a fifty three that is fully formed right now and go play football games. So no, it is. It's it's ratcheted up. And I think honestly, like, it's okay. I got Bill. Bill Bender's on the hotline for you. Oh, baby. Bill Bender of the Sportings. That was quick. Uh, wow. You're welcome. You too. Bill, I uh when you and I were speaking this morning, um, we, you were talking about Quinn Ewers, the Texas quarterback, and your your comp for him was uh, Jeff George. And I am sitting here next to one of the greatest Jeff – well, the greatest Jeff George fan of all time in Mr. Zagura, and he would like to discuss with you uh, your comp. Bill, tell yeah, me more. Please. I mean, are we talking this is the greatest arm the world's ever seen? Because that's, that's where it starts if we're in the Jeff George stratosphere as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Long arm, it kind of looks like it. Okay. It, it just, it I, and, you know, I'm not a quarterback. You, I remember how strong Jeff George's arm was and how 
I mean, it looked just pretty coming off his hand. And when he threw this pass to Xavier Worthy over the weekend, I was like, that kind of looked like a Jeff George throw. So it's a loose oh, comparison right now. And obviously, Ewers generates a lot of discussion. But I didn't expect to strike a chord on a CBD today. Well, I, I tell you, when you I'm did the comp, you, you ought to pull up the play, put it in your in your Twitter there, and just type Quinn Ewers, and you'll see the throw to Xavier Worthy, who's a highly regarded receiver at Texas. And the throwing mechanics are – there's a – when you said it this morning, I said that's pretty good. I don't know if, you know, who know I'm with you. Like, I don't know if, like, the velocity and all of that. But I remember when he was in Columbus, they were okay, like, the on. kid can flat spin it. Here it is. And just so, I'm coming in very skeptical Yep, because of my affinity for the great Jeff George. I'm coming into this very very skeptical. But here we're going we're gonna to get a look at the play. So, of course, it's take, taking longer than it should. Okay, here it is. He's dropping back. and like That looks good, their quarterback jersey in this practice yeah. here for the Texans. Come on. Anyway, when it plays, I'll see it. But So you think that this is a guy, is he going to be in the discussion for the top pick overall when this year's all said and done, Bill? Well, when you get into the 2024 quarterbacks, and I've, I've done that already, I've got it like preloaded for next week, but I'll tease you with this. I mean, most people are going to say Caleb Williams, Drake May, and then uh, three's up for discussion. If Quinn Ewers has a big year, I, I'm already on the arm strength, the talent, the measurables. Bo just said it. The way he spun it, Columbus, even in pregame, right? Yep. You know this kid can throw the football, and they're gonna they're gonna gravitate toward that. And it sounded like everybody got caught up in his mullet and his haircut. You have listened to talk to him. He is pretty chill. He's just He's a really shy, down to earth guy. I mean, who? Yes, and who could bring in Arch Manning for a recruiting visit and be the guy that can helps convince Arch Manning to come there? I think there's a lot of good things about Quinn Ewers. A lot of confidence. Now, sometimes with people that are quiet, they get dubbed aloof. That's what happened, to, to unfortunately, to Jeff George. I don't know why I can't get this play to play. It's, I'm sitting on it. It looks like it's going to be great. He's about the 45. It's going to be a really exciting play. I'm excited to see it happen <laughs> when it does. But nonetheless, all right, I like this. This is, gives me somebody to get excited about then because, as I said, I'm a Jeff George aficionado. I went down to uh, – I was in the great – city of Atlanta in, uh, when he t led that team to the playoffs. And then I go down for my freshman year of school at Emory University. And, when, you know, he gets into a fight with June Jones about three games into the season, gets, like, basically tossed off the team in favor of Bobby Hebert. And it was a very sad time for me. So I never really got to experience the whole Jeff George experience up close and personal. Uh-oh, here we go. Both here you go. Here's the play. I mean, it's a nice throw. It's a nice ball. Jeff George's ball would oh. never have left the screen a high. It would have stayed. It's a back. It's a back foot throw. Jeff George it's used to drop back to the it. left and then spin his hips to the right and uncork 80 yard dimes that never went five feet <laughs> off the ground. Right. He's all of a sudden become Bill Brasky. Jeff He's, George. No, has. Jeff George. No, no. He's had an absolute hose. <laughs> all right, you've intrigued me, Bender, but I'm not ready to, to bestow the crown of Georgian feats on He's him not ready yet. yet not yet hey bill let me ask you this uh while we have you here um next week we're going to mm -hmm. see quarterbacks take to the taken at the top of the draft uh if you were how do you rate those guys you've seen them play as much as anybody how do you rate them going into the nfl in terms of becoming nfl players and prospects and eventually franchise players i'm gonna give you a weird answer on the top two if i was my offensive line is a little rough I, i'd probably draft bryce young ability to extend plays, create, uh, throw, and I know that's probably the opposite answer, but if I have a little bit of an established team, I'd probably go with Stroud because of the accuracy. I think that's what's going to carry his NFL career is the, his ability to be an accurate passer and his size. And then the other two I'm not as high on just because I haven't seen enough of Anthony Richardson. We've seen one year. We know he put on a show on the combine, but can he be a 65% passer in the NFL? I don't know. And Will Levis, same deal. Huge arm strength. Will Levis will not make the Jeff George comparison. I don't want to upset Nathan, but um, uh, he's, I just think some time's needed to develop. So I'd go Young Stroud, depending on like Stroud fits Indy, Young fits Houston to me. Yeah, yeah. Then Houston blew it. Yeah, they did blow it. They absolutely blew it at the end. Hey, pal, uh, you, today's your anniversary. Is this <laughs> oh, yeah, right? Yeah, I was. I, we just got. Yeah, we just got back from we, – we snuck 
Because, as you know, Bo, we lived the life of running around with the kids. Yep. We didn't have time for dinner tonight, so we did lunch. I like that. I like working that in. Well, happy anniversary, buddy, yes, and thank you for, for joining us. For joining us on, in, in this case, no notice, and, and hopping on with us. Appreciate you, pal. <laughs> anytime. Anytime to t- talk about Jeff George, I'm in. So yeah. uh, thanks so much, guys. Have a great day. All right. Love that. The would you Is Jeff George's arm stronger than Michael Vick's? Is that Vic's different. the strongest one? I didn't watch as much George as well, obviously we're you did. Watch this in no, no, no. I, we've been through this. I just in real time, I don't remember watching a lot of him play. Vic was different. So Vic had kind of like that little flick, flick <laughs> and he could he could really <clears throat> spin it out there. George would kind of like once it left its hand, it just was accelerating all the whole time. It didn't necessarily. It looks effortless when you see the result of the football. Yeah, but it's the speed at which his ball is going like. 30 yards down the field that is I've never seen before. Yeah. And yeah. still to say. And Brett Favre had a cannon. But Elway had a big one. Elway I mean, had a big arm. about Elway with the cross. The Elway cross. Yeah. Favre, though, looked like he put every ounce of his being into every throw he made to the point where, like, his head. Oh, yeah, down, yeah, Like, yeah, it yeah. just, it wasn't easy. Jeff George throws easy. It's not Vic easy. Yeah. But it's a different velocity. If yeah. that makes sense. Did he win like those NFL when they would do the Pro Bowl, like the long throw The contest? skill challenges? Yeah. He would do that, and he would win the one where, like, he was very accurate, too, when he was sure. in San Rand, where you had to th- blow up plates and stuff. Oh, yeah, He yeah. was very good at that in the skills competitions. Yeah, yeah. Watch some of these. I mean, well, in these highlights, I just got, like, yeah, I was quite pleased watching Jeff George do his thing. And you'd be quite pleased if you choose my good friends at Re- Renew Home uh, for, for your home for the Huge last time team. with my great friends at Renew Home Exteriors. Siding and roofing products. They'll take care of you. Renew Home Exteriors team, great friends of mine, great friends of the program. Don't spend all day with high-pressure sales guys. The team at Renew won't waste your day with hours of negotiating. Renew offers upfront fair price to make your project easy. This month, take advantage of pre-pandemic pricing plus no interest on payments for 24 months. Renew Home Exteriors, superior products and superior service. Visit RenewEstimate.com for more one hour down you'll hear from deshaun watson at the podium are we doing a little miles today as well is that happening oh baby i, I don't, don't spread it out all might be coming spread no i'm not out. i won't no teasing of that if it happens it's a bonus but we're not, i can't tease it yeah I, watson we'll play watson at some point hour two poison we'll stop There's by to recap all of media AMT. availability you listen to cleveland browns daily brought to you by valley bet coming soon to ohio on 850 espn cleveland
Cleveland Browns Daily brought to you by Ballybet coming soon to Ohio on 850 ESPN Cleveland and graced with the presence of the Chief. How you doing, man? Good to see you. I'm doing good. How you guys doing? Is good? this Mighty Ducks? It sure is. Yeah. Look at that with the C. The cap. Shout Gorgeous. Out, shout out to Adidas. <laughs> there it is. That's it. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Where did, mm-hmm. did you watch it? Have you ever seen the films? I have, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Did you ever aspire to be a, a hockey player? No. No, I just enjoyed the, the movie, and that was it. <laughs> yeah. Gordon Bombay, inspiring. Yeah. Yeah, very inspiring. Yeah, very good. How you been, man? How's your offseason been? It's been great. Uh, just busy, but um, everything's been very smooth. You were UFC over the weekend, weren't you? Yes, that was in Miami. First time in 20 years, so it was, uh, it was a great outcome. Yeah, that's pretty good, man. Mm-hmm. So you spend all offseason in Miami. When did you come back to town? I came back, uh, I think, Friday. So you come back and it's a similar Miami. I'm over 78, 80. It was actually nice. Yeah, yeah feeling was, great. It was actually like, better hey. here than Miami. Miami was like a like a monsoon for like a week straight. Oh, they had flooding. Yeah, down the there, flooding. Right? Yeah. Bad. Yeah. Everybody okay? Mm-hmm. Everyone's cool. From your end. Yeah. Okay, good. good. Um, and then all of a sudden you, we get here on a Monday and it's uh, 38. From 77 to 38. It's <laughs> only Cleveland. <laughs> Only in Cleveland, indeed. So t- take us through kind of your off season. What did you, you said you were busy? Any trips? Any travel? Yeah, um, uh, I went to Tokyo. That was very nice. Um, I was I've always been a huge anime fan, uh-huh. a huge Japanese food fan. So just seeing their culture, seeing you know how they go about life. Um, you know, actually, we were walking around, uh, just walk, walking around like looking at stores and everything, and you and you'd see like the Louis Vuitton, you see like the you know some like five star restaurants, and you have like a couple people in it, right? Then you see like this like Hello Kitty little toy store, and it's like a five hour line wait. Like people are just patiently just waiting for a toy this big. It was the craziest thing. Wow! wow. I, I have no point of reference on mm-hmm. that. I don't even know what the Hello Kitty thing is. You it's know, like a it's a trinket. It's like a little. It's like a toy, maybe like three inches, two inches. Wow! Really? Yeah. And were people kind of in awe of you? I've heard if you're like over six feet tall or six feet. Yeah. You know, actually, it's crazy. I I, I had some fans out there that had like a picture of me ready. And I was like, that's very, very weird. You know, I mean, I was I was thankful, but like I didn't mention I was going to Tokyo prior. I always wanted to go. But just to have that just on deck, I was like, that's interesting. That's wild. How long were you there? And what when something you want to go to for a long time, you mentioned big fan of anime. Were there? What did you see? Like, what were you like? I have to do this culturally, and did it live up to what your expectations? It for were? sure did. I mean, just just everything that uh, we've done. We had like like a tourist or a tour guide that just took us, you know, from place to place, and it was just the culture was just it, it's beautiful. Like the, the 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 streets were so clean. Like you can eat off of it. It was it mm. was yeah, it was very different than yeah. where, where where we landed after that was New York. So yeah. Wow. How was the sushi? Beautiful. Was, what was what there makes one? it different? Like what makes it? Different I mean, just about the it just there? just I think just the en- environment. I mean, obviously, yeah. the food is was amazing, but just like seeing like where like it you know originated from and how like you know th- they they do things there. It was it was awesome. It was, it was a, a great trip. Was there a specific role that you had or a specific uh, sushi dish that you had that stuck with you that you'd never had before that was different? Um, that I've had out? a lot of sushi in my time, honestly, yeah. but I'd say what was shocking to me was we ate cow tongue now i i mean from the nigerian descent you know we eat a, a lot of crazy things but i never had cow tongue before and it tasted like bacon <laughs> so it was, it was yeah good. i've had I've a had tongue it. sandwich yeah yeah, yeah I mean, really? it's like That's a sandwich it. yeah. yeah yeah we had that on the pan- a cow Ponderosa. tongue sandwich yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. cow tongue yeah. cow tongue sandwich i used to play <laughs> in the, at the at the member guest tournament at uh at beachmont on it was either i think it was saturday the lunch was there was like corned beef what, and then yeah. there was tongue. They were just like slice. Mm-hmm. Like, My dad. Tongue. We we grew up. I grew up in Montana with cattle yeah. and r- had a ranch or whatever. So we would have you know you'd butcher the cows and like there would be time when the the cow tongue would be sitting in the bottom of the refrigerator. My dad would slice yeah. it off and make sandwiches. La lingua. Yeah. Right. Or something like that. Uh, I don't believe that, right? he called it that. No, I believe he called it tongue. I think he called it. Yes. I'm going. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's how that went. Indeed. Um, so back to work. Right. We're back. Um, it, just go ahead. You I was just more? Say, yeah. Did you get down to Houston at all? Deshaun talked about throwing um, some of the no, guys. No, I wasn't able to. Uh, okay. But, you know, Deshaun and I and the whole offense, really, we were always just in talks, just, you know, just talking to each other about just any, like, you know, everyday things, just, you know, things just so we just get that uh, connection. Just that rapport. Sure. Again. Yeah. yeah. How important do you, got, do you think it is for uh, your, your mental health, your, all of it, to unplug a little bit? Um, because you guys are, you guys are plugged in. 
big time all the way through, and it's eat, breathe, sleep football. How important do you think it is, and for you personally and for other guys, to just get away a little bit? I'm going to be honest. I think it is important, but at the same time, I just it, for, for me, uh, I can speak on my behalf. I feel like it's just – it's almost impossible to really fully unplug you know what i'm saying like yeah. even if like you get away you travel or whatever you're always in the back of your head just thinking about ball and like things that you can do to to just help the team you know be better or whatever mm-hmm. the case may may be so it was nice it was a nice time off but like you just always just i just for example um once we finished the season this past one uh i, I flew to my house in miami and I was like, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do anything for like two weeks. I'm just going to rest my, my body. And after two days, I just found myself doing something. And I was like, you know what <laughs> I mean? It was just always like, like my, my mind won't, won't let me just not mm-hmm. do anything. Yeah. Is it crazy to you? Because for me, I talked to you the day that you were drafted. Mm-hmm. You've been here. This will be your seventh season, right? Yeah. Crazy. And you're 26. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You're That's still wild, only 26. Man. Yeah. I mean, you turned 27 this year. But you, you're still only – you're – so young, but you have been here. You've grown so much in this time. When you kind of reflect back on that, you know, you would think it just blows my mind that you're still 26. How far you've come, what you've accomplished, and then what you still want to accomplish. I mean, last year, certainly on a per game basis, career year for you. You almost had career numbers anyway, very close at the end. But to think of how far you've come and yet you're still in your prime and not still ascending probably to your prime. Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, I really I owe it all to God, honestly. Uh, but yeah, it's it's been a journey for sure. I yeah. got drafted here when I was 20 years old. I didn't know, I didn't know shit. And uh, just you know, just as each day went by, each month, each year went by, just the progression of everything. You know, just the highs, the lows, and everything. So it's just truly a big blessing. What has been? I imagine you're 20. You come out of the U. You're a first round pick. I don't know, say you would take some things for granted, but what's kind of been the biggest growing in not only this game? Look, to play six years, you've played longer than the average player plays oh, yeah. significantly. Yeah. You have financially done better than the average player does significantly. What's kind of the difference in your mindset about how you approach your business in terms of the business of the game, your business probably even off the field now because that's a real thing that you have to think about on a, on a major level, you know, in these six years? Yeah, so, I mean, honestly, I feel like this year um, – I took it upon myself to be very selfish in terms of just like, you know, everything, every move that is made for me is very precise, you know, it's very just uh, calculated, you know what I'm saying? And I just, number one, I I try to be the helping hand for all the players, like anybody that needs anybody to talk to or just, you know, just wise words or just words of experience, you know, I want to be that person for them, number one. Number two, um, I feel like I got a taste of excellence last year before my injury and yeah you're cooking um yeah so the, 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 the name of the game is just stay healthy stay healthy and good things will happen so we're working hard we're working smart and you know we just can't wait to get this thing started there was a last season was tough i mean it was it was tough what happened in camp the season itself was tough you mentioned your injury the uncertainty around deshaun all of it um this is kind of the official start of next season i suppose with the voluntary and then we end with mandatory and then we'll get to camp and all that stuff um how how much is there is there any weight lifted off of you guys knowing that the team that you have is the team that you'll have you're not you're not waiting on anything from the league like this is the team and honestly we've talked about it all week this team's kind of fully formed before the draft in terms of the roster we could do a 53 right now if we wanted to um what what is that like for you as one of the leaders as you mentioned you took you've taken on a much more leadership role here in the last couple of years I'm gonna be honest. Um, the theory of of weight on or weight lifted, I feel like, is just an excuse. Okay. I feel like um, at the end of the day, you know, we're here for a reason. You know, we're not here by accident or mistake. I feel like we have the right talent, the right people in this building to really do something special, and that's what we intend to do. And it started yesterday, and it's just gonna each day. You know, uh, the hopes is just to get a little bit better than yesterday. You know, what I'm saying you're not gonna. Rome w- wasn't built overnight, you know what I'm saying? We obviously have things we have to work on uh, thoroughly, you know, and consistently at that. So I feel like as long as everybody's on, on the same page, you know, uh, the best thing I, I can tell the team is just to try to stay as close as possible, try to be as close as possible because no matter what, things will hit the fan, things will go wrong, and it's it's up to us to steer it back into the right direction and, uh, you know, f- finish the mission. So You guys are just getting into the foundation, right? Mm-hmm. And, and that's what Kevin's fancy talked about. 
you're, I'm not asking you to tell me what the changes are, but do you feel as a player on this offense now that's a full season with Deshaun that you brought in Elijah Moore, you got the speed of Marquise mm -hmm. Goodwin, Akins is in there to give us more versatility in some of those mm -hmm. two tight end looks. Do you feel like this offense is really going to evolve this year? And then I would imagine as a pass catcher, it's evolving in an exciting way for you. Absolutely. I mean, um, you know, the Deshaun is an exceptional player, along with other guys that we brought in and guys that we have here, you know what I'm saying? Elijah, you mentioned, Coop, Donovan, yep. uh, Jordan, Harrison, Zaire, you know, everybody really has uh, their own talent that they bring to the table. So yeah, it's it's very exciting, you know, and uh, we're gonna, the, the, the point of us is to come together and, you know, in camp or OTAs, whatever, give our defense hell as much as we can. And then when the season starts, you know, just transition that over and just continue to, you know, build upon that. So. I'm excited. I really can't wait just to get this started. You know, this is like I know. I feel like it's like the worst part of every year. Like it's just like, like the, the tease. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like we don't really get there the full action, which is cool. You know, we understand, but yeah, we're excited with the people we have. You know, you kind of talked about everything happens the way that it was supposed to, and and there was you know even though there was some uncertainty, it wasn't an excuse for what happened. But do you feel that for Deshaun, for example? Is it easier for if you've noticed a difference in him coming in, being able to be like, "This is my team now. I know I'm no, starting course. week one." You no, know, yeah. absolutely, and I feel like he he knew that it was his team last year, obviously with the uh, you know the complications, but yeah, just like having like you know the OTAs, like the pre like everything like under his wing, is, I think will definitely help him and everybody tremendously. So much talent on this team. So great to see you again, buddy. It's been a minute. Uh, Ultra Boost, most comfortable shoe ever built. Um. For me, I like them, but I'd say no. I, really? I, there's, there's a couple other Adidas shoes Any that Adidas? I really, that I really like. Man, I gotta know. After you have to give me the names of those because those are the, that, those things are yeah, perfect. Yeah, I got you. Ultimates. All right, I need the names. By Thanks. the way, have you run into a Tom Brady at all down there in Miami and reminded him that you <laughs> an <laughs> no, unbelievable actually, catch to hand him a loss in his last game in um, the city of Cleveland? I think we were in Vegas for the John Jones fight. I ran into him there. And we had like a good 10 minute talk, man. He's a, he's a, a really good dude and a great leader, even off the field, like just his presence, you know, it's, it's amazing. So did, yeah. he, did he remember what you did to him? He did, he did, you know, he, uh, <laughs> That's he, gotta be pretty he smiled about it, but he wasn't too happy. But you know, honestly, uh, I was just blessed to be in that position. I think Jacoby threw an amazing ball, whether he says it or not, I think he threw a great ball and I just came down with it, so. Is that your favorite catch you've ever made? You know, I had this one-handed touchdown in my rookie year as well. I have to really just compare and contrast, you know, because I, I, with that one, I dove. Okay. I was like off the ground with it, but this this one, I was off the ground a little bit, but I didn't really like get as high as I know I can. So I just, you know. Did, did Tom Brady talk to you about the other one in Vegas too? Which other one? I said the first one. The one oh, from the your first. Record. Oh, yeah. Just no, saying, he, I'm saying the fact that Tom Brady's he, bringing it up to <laughs> Vegas. I feel like is a nice. Feather yeah, he he definitely brought it up initially, and you know I laughed it off. You know we just you know talked some shit there, but yeah, it was it was awesome. Great awesome. seeing you, buddy. Yeah. Likewise, Thanks guys. Thank you so yeah. much. All right, Chief. the Chief. David Joker dropping by in studio on Cleveland Browns Daily. You'll hear from Deshaun Watson uh, coming up here momentarily. You listen to Cleveland Browns Daily, brought to you by BallyBet, coming soon to Ohio on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
New way to cheer on your Cleveland Browns and help your favorite four-legged companion, Barking Backers, presented by Milkbone, the Browns' newest club for pet parents worldwide. Sign up today at BarkingBackers.com. Barking Backers, the fan club for dogs. And now your quarterback, Deshaun Watson, at the podium. Let's have a listen. How's year two started for you here? Uh, it's been well. Uh, yesterday was good to see everyone, uh, the coaching staff, the front office, the players, teammates. Um, it's good to be around them, laugh a little bit, you know, talk about our off season and things like that. So it was good to be back in a building. Is everything just more comfortable, Deshaun, given where the uncertainty that you were in last year at this time? Uh, most definitely. You know, I have a, um, a vision that, you know, me and the staff and, and this organization want to go in. Um, last year was just kind of, you know, whirlwind. But, uh, you know, it was a good learning lesson for myself um, and for me to be able to grow. So coming in this year was is definitely, you know, I'm ahead of the game from where I was, you know, previously. How much have you guys been able to get together the, you know, the receivers, running backs, whatever, down in Houston this off season? Um, pretty much my whole off season it started, you know, in February when I started training and throwing. Uh, guys was coming in. Some guys stayed the whole time. Some guys was already there training. Uh, some guys were fly in for a week, fly back out, you know, and come back later on. So, you know, pretty much all the receivers came through. Um, at least once, and uh, that was a good sign to see. How much different will the offense look, do you think, this year than last year? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, that's still, you know, in the works of, of what Kevin and AVP want to do and myself. And uh, once we get all the, the guys here and we kind of, you know, see how this roster is going to turn, um, then we'll have a, a, you know, decision on how that offense is going to look. But, you know, we don't want to go in planning this is how it's going to look, and if it doesn't work, then... You know, we got to be open to be able to adjust all the time. It seems like a lot of people question or wonder, are you still capable of being the quarterback that you were in 2020? What What do you say to people that question that or wonder about that? Uh, I don't say anything. I mean, that's, you know, their own, own opinions. Yeah, I know who I am. Uh, this, this organization know who I am. And the guys that I play with know who I am. And, uh, you know, so... I mean, everyone have their own opinions of what what they want to, you know, say or how how they want to, you know, kind of just the fact of of last year. But at the end of the day, you know, I have an opportunity to go out there and prove what I need to prove in 2023, and that's what I'm focused on. I'm not focused on what anybody else have to say. How much can the additions of Elijah Moore and Marquise Goodwin help you as quarterback? Uh, we have guys that have experience. We have guys that made a lot of plays for their organizations that they've been a part of. And we have guys that, that want to come in here and work. And, you know, we last year we were very young. But with those additions, with more experience and more, you know, speed and talent, uh, it's going to bring up everyone else. And, um, you know, you just got to get the ball in these guys' hands and let them make plays. And that's, that's what I want to do. Deshaun, I know the last time we talked to you, you talked about sitting down with Kevin and man-to-man, -man, like going through this offense, changes that have to happen. I guess how, how have those early conversations gone? And now that you guys are back in the building, how are you going to continue that? Uh, yeah, I mean, every day is an is a, is a open conversation for all of us. Um, you know, today's meetings were the same way. You know, getting to know, you know, how he think, how I think, you know, studying defenses, studying this offense of what we want to do, uh, you know, coming up this upcoming season. But, yeah, we had plenty of, of, of talks, you know, throughout from, you know, when I came into building last year to now. So we want to continue to build that relationship and continue to build our trust in, in, within each other. And uh, if all three of us are on the same page, I think we can be very successful. How are you to, uh, about the fact that Amari did undergo the core muscle surgery and that he will be back to his 100% healthy self this season? I'm very excited. I mean, he's one of the best route runners, if not the best route runner in the game. So with his experience, his talent, and uh, the way that he played last year, you know, of course, before he got hurt, but even when he got hurt, he was still making plays. Uh, I'm excited to be able to have him full go uh, this upcoming season. And uh, we're going to spend a lot of time, you know, with each other. And, and, and once he get fully, fully healthy, then we can really put the time in and the work. Deshaun, Drew left to go to Arizona, the OC, but Alex sort of, Kind of is the de facto quarterback coach, even without the title. How how beneficial is that for you? Just the kind of the continuity, even losing the coach in that room, but but still gaining, you know, keeping Alex there as kind of the guy to work with. Uh, it's definitely good. You know, it's not too but big of a change. Uh, Drew did a heck of a job. He's going to do a heck of a job down in Arizona. Uh, you know, best of luck to Drew and his family and, and that organization. But you know, AVP he has a different style of, of coaching and teaching. Um, you know, he played the game also at this level. And, you know, with him being around guys that, you know, 
play at the highest of the highest level, you know, being in Green Bay and Cincinnati uh, and then coming back here was is definitely, you know, key for me. So I want to learn from from him, what he, you know, the guys that he'd been around when he was playing, but also the guys he coached. And I think that we can, you know, really make something happen and uh, do some great things together. Feel for you this year than it did a year ago? Uh, I mean, honestly, it's night and day. You know, I, I've, last year I've never been to Cleveland, only twice when I came on a pre-visit and when we played. Outside of that, you know, it was my first time up here with everything going on. Uh, but, you know, all that is, is in the past, um, like I said before, and I'm looking to move forward uh, with my life and my career and, and just being able to really plant myself in this community, in this city, and then also in this organization for a very, very long time and win a whole bunch of games. That connection happening with the community. You've talked about that a lot. Uh, most definitely, yeah. During my off season, I've been doing stuff. You know, everything is is don't have to be filmed or uh, put out on social media. So, but you know, I've was just in the community this this earlier. No, it was last week actually. Um, last week we went down to the uh, Fatima. Uh, I think I'm saying it right. Fatima. Am I saying it right? Fatima. Fatima uh, Family Center. Uh, down over there by the league park. Um, that was cool. I've never been in that area before, so uh, it was good to be around those kids. And, and then we have some, some older citizens uh, also in there that had a good time, and, and we uh, definitely, you know, signed some things and, and just, you know, spent some good time together. So uh, I'm definitely looking forward to just keep, continue to just be around and just show who I really am. What impact will it have on you this offseason that you still do have to deal with uh, those two pending civil suits? How does that impact your mindset and you know, just where are you with all that? Uh, my mindset, I'm, I'm healthy. I'm, I'm great. I'm happy. Um, I'm blessed to be in this position I am. Um, anything that has to do with legal side, I let my legal team you know, deal with that. My main focus is continue to grow as an as a individual, as a person, and then just continue to grow as a football player. And uh, if I can continue to do that and, and you know, look forward and, and look at all the positive things around me, then uh, I know things can, can continue to be, you know, blessings uh, that surround me. To get Josh Dobbs back in the quarterback room and then Jacoby getting this new opportunity with Washington. What was just a reaction all the, the moves? Uh, it, was, it was awesome. Uh, first, you know, starting with Jacoby, having the opportunity in Washington, you know, and it's funny because, you know, I trained with Quincy and Quincy knows Jacoby. I know Jacoby. So, you know, during training sessions, we would FaceTime all the time and it will be me, Jacoby, me, Geno Smith, me, Josh Dobbs, kind of on FaceTime while we're training and, uh, you know, all supporting each other. Uh, so, you know, best of luck to Jacoby and what he's going to do in Washington. Um, he's going to be a great addition to that locker room. And then having Dobbs back, a guy that who's been in, who I've been around last year, but I've been around Dobbs since I was in high school, you know, growing up in the same area. So it's good to see him come back. And, and what he did whenever he was away for the building for that short period of time for Tennessee was, was definitely dope to see too. So um, it's good to have the guys around me and, and um, good to see the guys have success and opportunities. Good. Looking back at the six games that you played at the end of the year last year, do you think there was a period, and now it will be easier this year, that the team had to kind of learn how to play with you and you had to kind of learn how to play with them? Of course. I mean, we're still going to continue to grow. Um, you know, I play a little bit different style than the previous quarterbacks they had here. Uh, the play calling is going to be different. You know, it's a different style of – you know, quarterback play that Kevin had around. You know, he was, you know, with Kirk Cousins, Case Keenum, and then, you know, go from, you know, Baker to Jacoby, then to me, you know, it's kind of different styles of playing uh, what I was doing in Houston. So, um, you know, it's always growing. Um, we always continue to try to, you know, find ways to improve. You know, and we're going to have our battles and our challenges, but you got to be able to adjust and, and, and move forward from that. Table, how excited are you having? Uh, Aikens, he, he's a playmaker. He's a guy that played a lot of ball, um, you know, made some big plays down in Houston, um, you know, when I was there and then even last year. So having this addition, you know, to an already, you know, stout tight end group with Chief and, and Harrison and Zaire, uh, that, that's, a great, that's a great room to be around and a great, you know, opportunity for them to be able to take their, their room and that position to a whole other level for this offense. Deshaun, did you have any reaction when you saw Jalen Hurts sign the contract that he did? I mean, it was dope. I'm, I'm excited for him. You know, he's definitely a, a friend of mine. Uh, we train together. We 
hung out together. Um, you know, I, I sent him a congratulations and told him dinner's on him when we go to Philly. And he, he said it's on him. So I took care of it last year. This year, he's got to take care of it. So uh, it's definitely good to be able to see him. He deserved every penny. Um, and all the other guys that's, that's up next deserve it too. Do you, feel, do you ever feel any kind of way about, you know, what's going on with Lamar Jackson uh, over in Baltimore? I mean, so much is made about the fact that he wanted the kind of contract that, that you had. Do you ever talk to Lamar? Uh, if so, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I reach out to Lamar all the time. We we talk through, you know, text through Instagram. We don't really talk about the business side, you know, because that's that's his space, that's his privacy. Um, you know, from outside looking in, you know, I hope he gets what he want. I, you know, I'm, like I said, I never talked to him about it, so I can't speak on, you know, his his business side. Uh, but you know, he's a great player, and he's going to be. You know, if he's back in Baltimore, he's going to be special for them. And if it's somewhere else, then he's going to be special for that organization. You know, he's a talent that the NFL need. And uh, we love to see him watch, watch him play unless we're playing against him. Uh, but, you know, I hope he gets what he, what he wants and what he deserves. And I think he deserves, all, I mean, everything, all of it. Two more, we're going It's been really a lot of it working out and having guys – come and, and meet you. What's the best part, though, of, of being back here in this building in, in Berea and having these guys together with you? I think it's just that, that bond and that chemistry. And it's not so much of a of football. It's just really that brotherhood that you build, you know, being around each other in the offseason. You have more time to really get to know this guy. You're not just training, and, and a lot of guys are, you know, resting, going home to see families. You know, guys are coming over, and, you know, we're training, and then we're going out to eat. You know, we're going to dinners and we're hanging out, you know, in, in social places. So um, I think that's the biggest thing. And once we get back here, that chemistry and that vibe, it just, it just takes it to a whole nother level because we know how we're going to react in certain situations. And we got to continue to build that even when we get back here. And that's the beauty of just having that off season and having guys come around. What did you think when you saw Jim Schwartz get hired and then the um, major additions on the defensive side of the ball? I mean, it's huge. Uh, he's, a, he's a guy that, you know, Won the Super Bowl, I think it was 2017 with Philly. Uh, so he's been at the highest of the highs. And that's what I feel like this organization needed. I think this is what that locker room needed. Not just for the defensive side, but for the offense. So we can compete. We can go out there and be aggressive. We can uh, go out there and, and, and talk trash, but be healthy at the same time. And then a guy that's been around and knows this game and, and is going to challenge that defensive side is going to challenge us each and every week. So if he, he can rise that defense to a whole other level, we can do the same thing offensively. And as a team, if all three phases, special teams, defense, offense can do that, then we can have you know a successful season. When you walked in, you were saying that you expect magical things to happen in 2023. So, you know, what what do you mean by that? What what, what kind of magic? Is yeah, a lot of wins. You know, a lot of W's. You know, having our 30-30 playoffs. And then once we get in that and, and the big dance, then anything can happen. You know, and um, you know, I'm not the type to you know always make promises and things like that. So I'm not gonna sit up here and do that. But the multiple thing, uh, the biggest thing is to win a lot of games, have this city rocking. And um, like Jim said, you know, in his press conference, you know, one of the biggest things that the city want is to be able to have that parade at the end of the year. So that's the ultimate goal. But we have steps and, and things and work to put in before we get there. But, um, yeah, that's what I really meant about that. You're up. I like that he just owns that and puts it out there and says, let's go. Yes. Love it. Yeah, and look, it's, it. it's not, he knows. He knows Come how on. good he is. They players know how good he is. He's just got to go out there and do it. No talking about it. Certainly in April is going to matter. And if people want to doubt him, I, I good. I think it's good. Let him use that as fuel. I think it's great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and going to be uh, going to be fun to watch this over the course of the next month or so as we build towards mandatory mini camp to see how it all comes together. And then, boy. Uh, next year when you get to camp, look out. AP will join us coming up next. Listen to Cleveland Browns Daily, brought to you by Bally Bet, coming soon to Ohio on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Welcome back into Cleveland Browns Daily, brought to you by Valley Bet, coming soon to Ohio on 850 ESPN Cleveland. AP in studio with us. So we had, um, good to see you, buddy. We had the uh, we had the Watson presser, uh, we had the coach presser, and then we had Chief in studio. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've been at all of it. Is there a theme that jumps out? I mean, we had everybody talking today, it seems like. Um, was there a theme that jumped out to you, kind of that crossed over all of them, or was it all different? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just everybody's excited to be back. Uh, you know, everybody has turned the page on last year and, and has a lot of hope for this year. Um, yep. You know, obviously, think uh, some of the bigger news today, just with, with guys who, you know, were coming off of injuries last year, coming back healthy, eager to kind of, um, you know, just get started, and specifically on the offensive side of the ball, you know, get started in a, in a full and normal off season with um, Deshaun Watson's QB. You know, no uncertainty as far as when, uh, you know, starting the season, when anything about like we had last year. So, um Definitely, uh, you know, and there always is uh, those themes for for every team uh, this time of year, right? This is when you start fresh. Everybody's back, back from you know, oftentimes vacations and things like sure. that. So, um, so it's not surprising that that's sort of I think the main theme <laughs> from today. But no, I mean, just you know, good to hear from guys. I heard from a lot of really, you know, important players today who were coming up on on a really big season here. So um, it was just just good to hear from guys and good to see that you know, there's a lot of excitement and a lot of healthy bodies uh, in the building here. It's amazing in one year just how different you think about Sean Watson's first press conference with the Browns and then his first oh, press conference dude, this year. Dude, that feels like that. Yeah. I remember it mm-hmm. like that. I mean, that was feels like a blink. And yes. yet sometimes it feels like 10 years. Like Same. It's both. Time is very weird. It is yeah. both. But I, I loved his kind of quiet confidence, not engaging in terms of, you know, people who say you have a lot to prove or anything like yeah. that. What kind of being in the room, what did you take away from him, his demeanor and just what he had to say? Yeah, definitely. I mean, he just seems way more comfortable. I think he said it himself. He feels way more comfortable just being in year two, you know, getting being able to, to know what to sort of expect as far as how each day is going to look like, what he needs to work on as far as, um, you know, mastering a, a playbook again and helping helping them kind of really grow. Uh, this passing game because obviously it was very you know inconsistent at times last year when he got back and now the big thing all year with Deshaun and with with Stefanski is just you know let's let's get together and let's really figure out what works best for you and um, this is the time of year when he's going to be able to, to to really start getting to work on that you know it's just it's light workouts right now obviously but you know eventually we're going to be able to get on the field and sort of see um, you know where how they're going to be able to improve and he's I would imagine he's going to look more comfortable he'll probably you know look even better than he did last year is shouldn't be any doubt in that and um, you know I'm excited to see where, where it goes and when we can finally see them in practice what it looks like I think you know as we look back on this in, in kind of in, in retrospect switching teams we talk about how hard it is for like receivers to switch teams often and have success now yeah. Mari Cooper did do it because you're learning a new playbook you're learning new terminology well when you're the quarterback you have to learn all of that and when you're the quarterback and you're coming in and your first press conference has nothing to do with football and, and you're dealing with so many things that have nothing to do with football and you're going back and forth and handling you know legal matters mm-hmm. to think that he was going to come in and play I think he's not a robot He's a person. I Dude, think I was, said all the time last year, like I think sometimes we think he was like a character on Madden. Right. And he was a 91 overall, and you just plugged him in, and you yeah. took out all the humanity of it. Totally. And it was it, like there were so many layers to that thing that – like, and it, there, we were all – you and I, all of us, we were all naive. Coach probably. Because it looked so good. <laughs> because it looked good in practice. You thought, well, this is how it's going to go, and this is who he is. And it's like, God, he hadn't played in a long time. Mm-hmm. Learning everything from right. scratch and – everything off the field like it was naive of all of us and we had to run two parallel offenses yeah i think the thing too that's important to remember just and we've seen over the years here how important it is for a quarterback to have chemistry with receivers and also how long it can take sometimes to build chemistry with receivers it's not something that's instant for a top receiver and a top quarterback ever and so i think the big thing here is just that deshaun is going to get reps all off season with these top receivers whereas yes. last year he was switching in and out going you know he was he was out for the first few months wasn't able to practice with the team now he's got a full off season where he's going to be able to just just throw passes the guys and there's so much value in that that's why it was so important that you know he wanted to get all the receivers down to to texas to to, to get in reps with them like i think that really is going to be a thing that uh, it's going to be talked about all years just you know how's the chemistry with receivers and things like that is it improving I think that's going to be the biggest thing that is going to benefit the Sean is just just getting throws to receivers over the course of an entire offseason. And also being able to – they can sit down and singularly design this offense for him. Yep. Last year you had to do some things for him but really create an offense for Jacoby Brissett who was going to play 
basically twice as many games as Deshaun was going to play. Mm -hmm. And then find a way to practice both of those types of offenses in practice. There was no blueprint for it. It had yeah. never been done. No. Yeah. That's the thing that Stefanski keeps saying when he's asked about it. Is this, this, is, this is like, it was uncharted territory, you know? And now this is normal. Now right. this is a normal football season, and we should be able to have some success here. Yeah, you have to, because that's, I think, the other thing that you talk about. We had Chief in here, and I'm sure that was a theme of the guys you heard talk. And we've talked to Coach about this at the Combine. Like, there is, there is a pressure. Like, we are not like the Houston no. Texans. We are not mm -hmm. like the Carolina Panthers. Like, we're paying our best players. They're all in their we prime. We need to win. It's time to go. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's it's so important. And they've done, you know, what they can this offseason to try to patch all the major roster holes. And a team that doesn't have a, a first-round pick until the third round this year, that's a team that needs to be winning right now. And so I think there is, there is you know, they're, no, they're never going to say there's a sense of urgency like that, but there is a sense of urgency to sort of let's let's make sure we get it right this year. Yeah, I mean, I put down a little 40, uh, 53 right here, and you can get to 51, like, in your sleep right now, and then it's some luxury things, and where the draft picks fit in, how that changes it. You know, you need maybe a third running back. Do you want, you know, nine offensive linemen? Do you want seven linebackers for special teams since we brought mm -hmm. some special yeah. teams guys in here? But, you know, who's the fourth defensive end? Who's the third, fourth defensive tackles? But for the most part, like, this thing is pretty well locked in, fourth safety. It's pretty well locked in and ready to go. Yeah. It's fully formed, dude. Like, yeah. I mean, we've never gone into a draft this way no. since I've been doing this, and, and probably you too. Your whole starting lineup is formed it's with the exception of the second defensive tackle. Yeah. And the teams that are supposed to be winners this year, this is where the roster should be at. You shouldn't still be needing to necessarily rely on the draft to patch, you know, any major roster holes. And, yeah, you know, like you said, you know, they still could maybe use another another reliable defensive tackle a veteran or perhaps I mean, somebody Maurice in the draft but plays well i mean i liked mm -hmm. him a lot yeah. of michigan but yeah. anyway yeah. Yes, exactly. i mean there's but this is this is where a winning football team should be at with their roster right now yeah good to see anybody awesome brief. on i did realize yeah. oh my gosh i was on for so five brief. minutes <laughs> when you're fun. Good. yeah time flies yeah. When you're fun. so much more to come you'll stick the bronze daily on 850 espn cleveland
It was good seeing everybody. Good seeing the chief, man. So that was no, uh, uh-uh. nope. So fun. There you go. Uh, good, good seeing the chief. Good to hear from Deshaun, uh, coach as well. Uh, we had Miles today. We had Newsom today. We had Amari today. Um, am I missing anybody? I mean, that's a lot. It's a uh, lot of people. Newsom, Amari, Miles, Wa- Miles Watson. Watson, coach, coach. I mean, the bigs then, of the bigs. We'll, chief, we'll get to some of the cuts from. Mr. Garrett and Mr. Man, Miles had some interesting thoughts on the Pro Bowl that I thought I thought. Boy, did he! Boy, yeah. You don't say. Well, who could have saw that one coming? Minute. Yeah. I mean, the thing was <laughs> nonsensical. Like you could. At one point, someone in the about? room asked about, you know, well, like the players said they had fun. He goes, "What players? There's not one that had fun. There's not one that wants to run that back." And yet, if you remember, really, like, Miles couldn't help himself. Remember how hard he was trying to dodgeball. Yeah. Oh man. Like he couldn't help himself. Well, that that's probably fun. Yeah. The 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 best catch trying to make it into a duck contest was the most yeah, absurd were, thing was, I've ever seen. That was pretty ridiculous. There's no way. 30, 30. There's no way to thread the needle. It's a it's an impossible premise. Yeah. To have football players do something competitive that they don't get hurt and isn't. It's just tough. Mm. Uh, the next level is coming up next. We're back tomorrow. Cleveland Browns Daily 850 ESPN Cleveland.